Coming up, we'll review this and find out why you should have it with you at all times. Plus, for gamers, a PS Vita controller. Ooh. And the hottest Motorola phone with a keyboard. It's all coming up next. Yes, it's time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Audible dot com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast dot com slash before you buy. Hey, welcome to Before You Buy, the review show on Twit, where we get all the greatest new products and have our staff review them. I think it's kind of fun for the staff, and it's sure fun for me because I get to see all the new things. Tony Wang is a big gamer. We know that. One of our editors. In fact, he runs the entire edit crew. And you had a PS Vita. I remember, in fact, yeah. the day the PS Vita came out, you were sitting in the lobby there going, <laughs> I'm going to stay up late tonight and I'm going to yes. get a Vita. You love it? Yes, I do. And is it like the PS Portable, PlayStation Portable? Yeah, it's pretty much, I mean... The, Without the, the UMD disks. Right, and, right. Without UMD, but now you have 3G connectivity. I mean, it's not 4G, but... That's pretty good. Yeah, 3G is... Is yours connected to Verizon Sprint? Uh, it's AT&T. AT&T. Yeah. So you uh, have a new controller for the yeah. PS Vita. This is from a company that makes a lot of controllers. In fact, Nyko, I think, don't they make the ones with fans in it so you don't get sweaty palms? Yes, they, they make those for uh, your home systems if you need What's to. this one called? So this is the uh, Power Grip. Let's take a look. Tony Wayne for 2.TV and Before You Buy, and today I'm reviewing the Nyko Power Grip for the PlayStation Vita. Let's take a look. Power Grip is basically a grip for your Vita and with a built-in battery pack. Power capacity on the Power Grip is 2,800 million per hour so you're getting more than double your um, your PlayStation Vita which has about 2200 million per hour it's very easy to uh, install all you have to do is put in your Vita and the connector on the bottom just slides up pops in place and there's a lock on the bottom and you just push the lock in and you're probably wondering why there's no on-off switch on the power grip, and that's because uh, you use the power grip in conjunction with your internal battery. So you can charge both unit as is using your uh, factory uh, charger. You can see it's on the bottom of the unit. And that would charge both your internal PS Vita battery as well as the grip itself. Pros and cons. I really like the design on the grip. Reminds me of my favorite uh, console controller, which is the GameCube. Sort of skinny and long here on the bottom. And um, another pro is obviously you're really doubling the battery life. And the construction is really, it's really solid piece of plastic with a soft um, rubberized feel. And you know, you don't have to worry about your Vita falling out. It's really in there. The con, which is not a real con is that if you see the way the unit is designed, um, it's thinner on top. So when you put the unit down on a flat surface, let's say if you're watching video, uh, watching Netflix on here, which I do a lot, uh, you put it down and it's tilted away from you. So that's the only con I have, but with a rubberized grip, you can actually prop this up really easily against an um, you know, uh, external speaker or prop it against something on your desk and that really, that works really well. A buy, try or don't buy, this is gonna be a buy for me because at $24.99, you can double the battery life uh, of your Vita if you're actually hurting for battery life right now. I mean, I'm doing okay, uh, I plug it in when I'm home, but if you're on the road a lot and you need six to eight hours of battery life out of your Vita, this is the power pack for you. So go out there and get it. I'm Tony for Twitter TV, and this is the Nyko Power Grip for PlayStation Vita. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate it. What is that T-shirt? I Wolf Me. Uh, it's uh, the brand logo. It's Dainese. 
they make motorcycle gear. I Steinese me? Yeah, I Steinese me. I don't think I would have ever thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I got a question for you. See that strap? See this? What could, what could, is it a fan? Is it a some sort of spanking device? I don't know. We gave it to Russell Tammany. He's our uh, contract IT guy. And let him review. This is the latest from C. Crane, Russell. Hi, this is Russell Tammany for Before You Buy. Today I'll be reviewing the C Crane Super USB Wi Fi Antenna 3. It's listed for $109.95 at ccrane.com. So, this is the C Crane Super USB Wi Fi Antenna 3. Uh, it's supposed to be a high powered Wi Fi USB adapter, so you can connect it to your laptop and get a lot more range than what you'll have in your laptop. Uh, it shows that you'll get up to a mile from your computer of line of sight. Um, which, you know, sounds like a great deal. You could be really far away from your Wi-Fi router if you could be a mile away and still actually have a connection. Um, so uh, taking a look at this device, uh, it only has 2.4 gigahertz wireless N, so you're missing the 5 gigahertz band. Um, usually that's okay, though, because 5 gigahertz doesn't go quite as far. So to connect from far away, you're probably going to be using 2.4 in the first place. Um, it does come with two USB plugs, uh, the second USB plug is used to give the device a little bit of extra power if your USB ports in your computer don't have enough power over a single port to power this device, uh, because this does draw a lot of power. So the driver support for this device is a little limited. If you have a Windows computer, simply plugging it into the computer will generally download a driver and find it, and it'll just automatically work. Uh, this did work in Windows 7, uh, both 32 and 64-bit, but it didn't work in older operating systems. They've included a driver on the CD where after you install the driver, it installs a utility where then you can use that utility to help configure your wireless. Um, but I usually don't like devices that make you use a separate utility to configure your wireless because it's a little more confusing to the user. It's not something they're used to, and the interface isn't really designed that well. Um, Macintosh users, uh, if they install this device, it doesn't currently support uh, Mountain Lion, but that is coming in October. Uh, but on a Macintosh, it actually shows up as a regular wired Ethernet adapter, and then it has a separate application as well to configure it to join to the Wi-Fi. Uh, we had difficulty getting that to work at all. Uh, here we tried it on a couple different Macs and had problems with getting it to not only maintain a connection, but keep the connection through reboots, and once you're connected, it would drop off and then not connect again. Uh, on Linux computers, it's a sort of a little spotty as well. Uh, there is a driver that will work, but it has issues with Ubuntu on the latest version. So uh, if you're trying to use this from a live CD or from Ubuntu, it's not really as uh, you know, universal as some other USB adapters are. So the most important thing about this, though, is the range. That's why you're buying it. So uh, one thing that's nice is that you do get a long 15-foot cable. Uh, you also get some suction cups and a lanyard, so you can use that to attach it either to the inside or outside of a window and get the antenna in a better location. Uh, one of the problems you'll have, uh, you know, if you're trying to use it in like an RV on your property is that being inside of that RV means that, you know, you're sort of filtering the signal through the metal of the actual vehicle. So getting it in a window or getting it outside can get you significant range. Um, so. I took this home and plugged it into the laptop. Uh, now I have a Wi-Fi router that's in the corner of my house and I can walk outside of my house for about a thousand feet before I run into any trees or obstructions. So I figured that this would be a good place to test this device. Um, I was able to get about 400 feet away and at 400 feet I still had an 11 megabit decently strong connection that I felt was reliable enough to use full time. Now, uh, that is a lot further than I got with my laptop. The laptop was only about 300 feet or so. Um, and at that 300 feet, my laptop would only do 5 megabit, and it was a little bit spotty. So I really had to come into about 250 feet with the laptop to get an equivalent connection. So you get an extra 150 to 250 feet of range with this antenna over the antenna that would be built into your laptop, uh, which can be significant but it's just nowhere near the one mile uh, that is suggested on the box uh, in an open environment. Uh, if you have a directional Wi-Fi uh, antenna on your router and you know, it's high gain and high power, 
uh, you may be able to get a mile in the most optimal conditions, but you know, regular users with regular routers, even in open conditions, aren't going to see anywhere near a mile. So the pros for this device is that it's IP65 dust and water resistant. This means that you actually can mount this outdoors and rain and wind and dust won't affect the unit, uh, which is a little rare in external USB antennas. Most of the time, you need to have them inside. Uh, it has better range than what would be in your laptop, but the range isn't really that amazing. Um, the cons are that it's a little expensive at 109.95, uh, and the Mac and Linux support is a little spotty. Um, you don't really get the full one mile that they'll say, but if you're right on the edge where your laptop gets a signal, but it's not very fast and it's a little bit flaky, a device like this will give you a good, faster connection. But it's not going to be a miracle. You're not going to be able to drive to your friend's house and use your Wi-Fi. So even though this product does give you a little extra range, I'm going to give it a don't buy. I feel it's a little too expensive. There's other products that use the same Raw Link 3070 chipset that sell for much less uh, from other generic uh, you know, Wi-Fi providers. Uh, it doesn't really seem like that polish of a product. The drivers are provided by the chipset manufacturer, and the interface is confusing. Uh, the extra range is great, but unless you absolutely need it and need something that you can use outdoors, I really can't recommend that this is a buy. Thank you, Russell Tammany. He is a Wi-Fi and networking expert. He is also uh, our IT guy and keeps us uh, running. He uses a lot of high-end gear. I should point out that I think one of the products for this, because I talk to him a lot on the radio show, are truck drivers who get to truck stops and just want a little bit extra uh, on their truck cab so that they can uh, reach the Wi-Fi access spot at the truck stop. For you, that might be a good choice. And the other thing that is really true is that C Crane is very good about returns. They have a 60-day return policy, so be easy enough if you needed something like this to give it a try and uh, see if it does uh, the job. And also, it sticks to any surface, including... To, I don't think I can get it off, Don. It's got a good... Oh, <laughs> strong suction cup. <laughs> Nicole Lee is here. We're going to talk to her in just a second about uh, the hottest new uh, phone from Motorola that has a keyboard. They're one of the few companies still making Android phones with keyboards. Before we do that, let's talk a little bit about the book everybody is talking about and Audible.com. You know Audible. I love Audible. We're big Audible fans here. They're the audio bookstore with over 100,000 titles of audio books. You can put them on your iPhone, your Windows phone, your Android phone. Of course, play them on your computer. I play them back on my Sonos. I, almost everything works with Audible now. And it's great because, yeah, let's face it, nobody has time to read anymore. With Audible, uh, you can listen uh, in, during your commute, at the gym, uh, while you're walking your dog, and get a lot of reading done. Now, the book I'm noticing right now, I'm going to put this on my, uh, my uh, wish list, No Easy Day, the first-hand account of the mission that killed Osama bin Laden. You can't see my computer right now, Brian, because I've got it up here. Um, yeah, there it is. Uh, this is the book that a lot of people have been talking about. Mark Owen, who is on SEAL, was uh, on SEAL Team 6 uh, and was uh, there... Uh, along with the other 24 uh, members of the SEAL Team 6 who, when they uh, did the raid on Osama bin Laden, uh, tells the story. This is a story that, they, that the, the people did not want told, but lots of additional detail. I can't wait to listen. This is the kind of book listening to will be very dramatic, so that should be fun. No Easy Day, the first-hand account of the mission that killed Osama bin Laden, just came out uh, at audible.com. But, you know, if that's not your cup of tea, they've got thrillers, they've got sci-fi, They've got a ton of great novels. Um, I like nonfiction, lots of history. It's all there, 100,000 strong. And I'm going to tell you how you can get your first book free. Just visit audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. Audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. And you'll have it. Ooh, look, Claire Danes reading A Handmaid's Tale. Wow, that sounds really good. I love that Mark Wood Atwood novel. If you like sci-fi, that would be a great one. And Claire Dane, let's just listen. Can I listen to a little bit of, just hear how she sounds. A chair, a table, a lamp. Above, on the white ceiling, a relief ornament in the shape of a wreath. 
<laughs> and in the center of it, a blank space. <laughs> and Tony and over. Tony and Nicole are looking up at the ceiling. That's what happens when you listen to these books. They come alive in your mind. It's like watching a movie. Audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. You'll be signing up for the gold account. That's a book a month. It's it's nice to have the subscription plan because every month you get a new book. Uh, but you get to choose the book. So go there, sign up. The first month is free. The first book is free. Cancel at any time. Pay nothing, but the book is yours to keep forever. So that's a very good uh, very good way to try out. Audible dot com audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy for that free book now let's say hello to nicole lee who produces this show and what dick d bartolo calls strangulation right. <laughs> our, our interview show triangulation in fact dick's going to be our guest tomorrow yes, on triangulation be. i'm excited about that mm -hmm. the following week we're going to talk to uh, hans peter braunbo i met hans peter at uh, in norway mm -hmm. he's a norwegian but he lives in the states works for nokia and is char in charge of kind of the innovation a section of Nokia should be very interesting to talk to him, especially since it'll be coming right off Nokia World and a mm -hmm. bunch of big announcements. And then the following week, I'm really thrilled. I've wanted to do this for a while. Our old friend Jessica Corbin, you may remember her from the Screen Savers. Uh, she's been doing a lot of entrepreneurial stuff. She has a new business, and mm -hmm. we'll get a chance to find out to catch up with an old friend from Tech TV, Jessica Corbin. So we've got some great guests coming up. Yep. Thanks to you. Appreciate it. But in between all of that work on this <laughs> show and that show, you also have been reviewing phones. Right. And uh, we always give you all the phones because she's so good at this one. This is uh, from... Motorola. Motorola. The Photon is kind of their top of the line, or has been until the new announcements, which will come tomorrow. Right. So the Photon is very... Um, it's very Sprint. It's, it's Sprint's essentially brand name for all their Motorola and Android phones. I and they're usually dual here. core, right? I mean, they're, they're pretty high-end. Like this, yeah. this, this particular one's a 1.5 gigahertz dual core um, Qualcomm Snapdragon. It's a nice uh, screen. Very nice screen. It's their color boost technology, quote unquote. It's a QHD though, so it's not, not the top of the line resolution or anything like that. But it's still pretty nice and bright, um, as you can see here. 4.3 inch um, diagonally, which is nice. It's, it's ice cream sandwich on here. Um, yes. So this is a top-of-the-line phone, but it has something unique in the Android marketplace. It has a, a real physical keyboard. Yeah, so this is this is essentially, I think Motorola is one, one of the few Android makers that still do uh, physical keywords. So if you slide it up right there. I don't know if a lot of it. people really still want that physical. And this keyboard, I mean. That looks good. It looks really, it's really Big good. Big keys. Very nice and roomy. Five rows of keys, not, not usual, four rows of keys. Dedicated number row. And I don't know if you can see this on the, on the screen here, but they're edge lit. So you can adjust the brightness of the keyboard. And even in the darkness, you so can do this. Even in the dark, you can sort of see what you're typing, which is, which is good. So they're edge lit, and it's, you can adjust the brightness of the keys. They're very nice, and um, I don't know, I really like the keyboard. It was one of the best keyboards I've ever tried, really. Oh, there you go. Ah. You see? It's, it's lit. Wow. In darkness. They turn off the lights, and you can see how well that how, screen lights how up. How brightly lit it is. Very usable. Very, very usable, very user-friendly. Very nicely raised with the surface. So this is not a droid. This is a, well, I mean, it's in the same droid family, but because it's Sprint, it's they labeled call it a the photon. photon. Yeah, Got it. that's essentially it. And this is the, um, one of the few um, Motorola phones for Sprint that has LTE. Now, this is Sprint LTE, not Verizon LTE, not mm. AT&T LTE. So good luck finding Sprint LTE in your neighborhood because they're not really nationwide just yet. They promise it'll be there by the end of the year. But uh, I you know, guess you if you're going to buy a phone today and you're going to have it for two years, you'd want to get one that sure. at least supported oh, LTE absolutely. so that when I, it comes, I do, I do you think get it. It's, I yeah. do think it's a good buy, but right now it's kind of hard to find Sprint LTE right. depending on where you live. Right. So um, it also has a very, so it has a, has a nice camera button on, on the side. Here. Not many phones have camera buttons, but this one, this one does. A volume rocker and the usual ports on the side here. Micro HDMI port, USB port, and all of that. 8 megapixel camera on the back. Another interesting thing is that this phone has um, GSM roaming. Now you think it's a Sprint phone, CDMA, right. but it also has a GSM chip in it. So it's so a world phone. It's a world phone. So you, when you, if you go to Canada or the UK or wherever or Asia, there's a, there's a SIM card inside it that will detect where you are and do GSM roaming, GSM global roaming, which is very rare for a Sprint phone. That's nice to have. A world phone. Yeah. Uh, however, this is this is a very very big con in my opinion. Um, the battery like the battery is not removable. Oh. It's a 7085 milliamp battery, which is not the biggest battery really. And the SIM card is not removable either. What? Right. So you have to sign up for Sprint's GS International roaming. And pass. it's not you can never have it unlocked because you, you can never, never get into have it. it unlocked. You can yeah. never un remove it and That's use your use your own SIM card. Yeah. Which kind of defeats the purpose, right. I feel, of having a global phone. But so you'll be using Sprint roaming. You'll be using Sprint roaming, essentially. 
and um, it has eight gigabytes of storage in here with micro SD card slot, um, and otherwise it's it's pretty pretty standard. Eight, eight megapixel camera on the back. The camera, I have to say, I mean, it's a it's a decent camera, but it doesn't have a lot of the features. There's no macro or there's no HDR or any of the the camera features you would normally find in the, in the Samsung or HTC phone. So the camera features are a little bit lackluster. I think. Traditionally, Motorola, uh, its customization Android has not been great. They called it blur. I don't know what they call it these the, days. I have to say, they really, this is This doesn't pretty, look like it's got it's anything on it. It's pretty stock. It's pretty yeah. stock um, ICS That, that looks like concerned. ICS. This, yeah. is, this is ICS. With like yeah. a few, maybe like the, the widgets maybe look a little different. Uh -huh. um, and the, it, it does use the virtual um, but it's not the capacitive buttons right. of other Android phones. Right. So I, I think I think Motorola Motor is basically, basically non-existent. I feel because the, it's so, so it's is so little. Close to a Google experience. Very close to stock. Maybe yeah. a few Motorola touches here and there, but right. very close to. How is the speaker on it? Does it sound okay? Yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. I think with a, with a phone that big, you almost feel like it should have a big speaker on. It should be loud, right? Because you're 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 in order to get the keyboard in there, you're getting a thicker. That's the reason why phone, it's thicker because of the keyboard. It's disappointing to me that it doesn't have a bigger battery. Seventeen hundred eighty-five milliamp hours is nothing. Uh, not to be able to change it is really bad. Yeah. So. Let's go through the pros and cons. Absolutely. So the pros are that um, it has GSM roaming, which is good, I feel. And the LTE speed, you know, depending on where you live, right. is a very good sign. Yeah. Um, it's the keyboard. I mean, it's the key, a I think that's the, the best keyboard, keyboard I've ever is seen. Really amazing. That's cool. The that's best really keyboard nice. I've ever used. Yeah. It's edge lit. Uh, it's bright under um, dark conditions, so it's really good. The cons, again, the battery and SIM card are not removable, which to me, it's kind of a really big downside. And uh, the battery life, you know, is 1785 milliamps. Are you getting much like through the day? I would say like through the day, not through the evening. Okay. Through the day, but not through Eight the Eight hours, right. not 12. Right, right. exactly. Okay. So it's, you know, not the, not the best thing. And it's $199 oh. with a two-year service agreement. So the pricing is a little bit high for what it is. Um, you know, for that price, you could get like a S3 or like a, right. you know, a Droid, a Razer. A but like you got to understand the people who want keyboards yes. really want keyboards. That's and why, that is a good choice. That's, for why my that's why my ultimate decision for this, buy, try, or don't buy. My thing, my thing is a try. Just because if you love keyboards, it's like, right. no, it's like no contest, right? right? But if you care more about the battery life and the SIM card and all of that, you may say, you know, no. So I would say it's a try. The Motorola Photon Q199 with a Sprint two-year contract. A try, maybe a buy if you really, really, really want a physical keyboard yeah. and you're on Sprint. That's the phone to right. get, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Nicole Lee. Nicole produces uh, our Before You Buy show. You can reach her with suggestions, recommendations, and things you'd like to hear us review at uh, our email, byb at twit.tv. Full-length versions of all of our reviews are available on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash twit. Soon to be... We're going to move it to youtube.com slash, I don't know, before you buy. I'm not sure what the... I don't know, because we're getting are. trying to get links for all the shows. But if you go to youtube.com slash twit, you'll find a, a yeah. link there to the Before You Buy channel. And the reason we're doing that is so that you can subscribe to individual shows on YouTube instead of subscribing to every show we put out, which has been the only way we could do that. Thank you, Nicole. I was going to review the Dell XPS uh, uh, 24, the all-in-one. Mm -hmm. uh, just didn't have time to give it a full, thorough review, and I want to. Sure. One of the things I'm going to start doing whenever I review a Windows PC now is put Windows 8 on it. Mm. Because if you're buying it today, today. you want to make sure it works with Windows 7, of course, but you also want to make sure it's a good Windows 8 machine. So that's one of the reasons. Uh, I'll have that for next week. Okay. Uh, I promise you, I'm going to put Windows 8 on that. And we'll give it a try. Thank you all for being here. Uh, thanks to uh, Brian Burnett, our uh, technical director. And uh, we do this show uh, on uh, Tuesdays about 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, 2200 UTC on twit.tv. But of course, not only on YouTube, but you can always get audio and video downloads, uh, on-demand versions of the show at twit.tv slash BYB. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for being here. Remember, you got to watch before you buy. See you next time.